My name is John Pesos, and I'm one of the co-founders at GrowX Amsterdam. And at, at GrowX, what we do is we actually make a climate to produce plants inside of. And our first focus is, putting, um, is making plants for food. But there are three different verticals which you can do. The biochemical industry, the pharmaceutical industry. But right now we're focused on food. Let's zoom out for a second. Everybody here definitely cares about these issues, specifically climate change. Now, agriculture is at the crosshairs of all three of these issues, societal challenges that we're facing. GrowX is being built off the premise that the future is urban, and we need to make food infrastructure to feed cities with fresh food. That's a little bit about the population growth and the diet. Climate change is a little bit less obvious, and I'd like to focus on that for a second. Currently, agriculture uses 60 times more land mass than urban and suburban areas combined. 30% of the Earth's surface is used for agricultural production. Think about that. 30%. Do you think that, that would change the climate? Do you think that would reduce ecosystem? Absolutely. The president of the Rabobank said at a, conver a conference uh, uh, pretty similar to this one over at Wagner, he's like, maybe we can get 5 or 10% more, more agriculturally viable land online. But I'd like to impress upon you all that it's up. The other thing, too, is how that, how that food gets here. So like for like, a vertical farm, which I'll show you in a second, uses more energy than a field farm. But that, that produce still needs to come from somewhere. So you have the logistics, you have the, you, you have, um, the warehousing, you have the distribution centers, you have all this stuff. And with building a vertical indoor farm, this is installed inside the city of Amsterdam. Uh, we can go on multiple levels, and we can, be, we, again, we make a climate for food production. But the thing that I'm most excited, well, excuse me, Within these climate cells, we have two different cells that are built right now. So let me talk a little bit about product roadmap. We have our lab area, which is up and functioning. Those are these individual units in one cell, which we control the climate for. Uh, you can see uh, to, in, in the lab, we have um, Walter, who's the executive chef of the Hulkston, fairly popular hotel here. And that's the type of customer that we're, we're, we're targeting. We're targeting hotels and restaurants because they're the largest food buyers within the city below retailers. So if you want to get a retail channel, it will actually, they require so much volume, it will require us to build an entire facility uh, just for that retailer near their food distribution center. But right now, we're really working more on the concept level of how to clean up the supply chain. So, how does this work? We basically take seeds, we take nutrients, we take water, we take green electricity, and we plug it into our box. And in between 8 and 30 days, we'll produce a leafy green. That could be a microgreen, it could be an Asian green, it could be a bag of salads. Then we take that and we use an electric vehicle to transport it to our bike distribution partner. And then they go to the chefs. Now, I think this is one of the most interesting things that we're doing. We're working with chefs. That's not how agriculture works, okay? A greenhouse's customer isn't you, it may be a retailer, but it's not you and it's not a chef. It's somebody who shows up with an empty container looking to fill it with tomatoes or basil or whatever it is that they're growing. What we're trying to do is basically reconnect agricultural production with the end users. And I think the chefs could provide valuable content on flavor, on nutrition, on how to cook things better. And that's, that's the direction which, um, in which we'd like to go. So by doing this on an end-to-end -end level, what we have done is we've collapsed the entire supply chain, we've started production local, we've added a just-in-time factor. So like when, when Chef Walter needs a bag of basil, well, we will either ship it to him a little bit undergrown, perfectly grown, or overgrown. So we have about a 72-hour window that we can just leave it there. So as far as, as, far as doing the, the correct uh, demand and, and prediction analytics, um, we basically don't lose food in our production system. That's one of the biggest loss makers right now. A lot of food doesn't come off the farm because it's not suit suitable for market. A lot of it's left in the chain, but this is what I promise you. 
When you get your greens, they're a week old. So we're looking at local, clean, tailored, on-demand, scalable urban agriculture. And if anyone here would like to come see the farm, I'd be happy to jump in a cab with you, we can cruise over, take a look, and have a taste. These are my contact details, and we'll be looking to raise a round uh, later this year, um, probably, probably in September or so, but happy to start the conversation now. Thank you. Thank you.